Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. I was so excited to see how many people signed up for this uh, today. There were uh, well over 120 people who signed up, and a lot of you are here. Welcome. Welcome to uh, some of our earliest investors and some of the earliest users. You know, some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, and, uh, you know, for those of you who don't, you know, my, my name is Dr. Leah Houston. I'm an emergency physician, uh, and I practiced across the U.S. for nearly 10 years before a hospital actually was using my identity to bill under my name uh, without my knowledge, permission, or consent. Uh, and so that led me to build HPEC, uh, which is uh, a way for us to own our credentials uh, in order to move freely to prevent that kind of fraud and then to eventually connect with patients in a direct and peer-to-peer -peer way. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to share a little bit about what's, um, you know, what, what it is, what HPEC stands for, as well as what a DAO is. Uh, and so um, I want to, again, thank everybody who's, who's here tonight. I know everybody's super busy. And so it's my honor that you're spending, spending time with me here. And so this is the agenda. You know, first, you know, we'll just intro HPAC. What is it? Who are we? And then what is decentralized identity? And then what is a DAO? What is a decentralized autonomous organization? And then we'll do some polls to try to get an understanding of what people care about and what people think. Uh, and then we're going to do some important actions that we need to take now. So first, what's HPAC? HPAC stands for the Humanitarian Physicians Empowerment Community. Um, and I, I share this quote by Alice Walker. She's the author of the, A Color Purple. And she famously said, the most common way people give up their power is by thinking that they don't have any. And so the system has made us to think that we don't have power. Um, you know, both doctors and patients, not just physicians. So uh, the thing is, is, you know, without our patients, we have no work. We have no way to, um, you know, to serve. And then without patients, they die, permanent disability. Um, you know, without the stroke of a doctor's pen, nothing happens. You don't get, you know, medication, you don't get surgery, you don't get discharged or admitted to a hospital. So we're the ones that fuel the engine. We are the value creators in this system. And so we need to stop thinking that we have no power because we have all the power. We just need to move forward. We just need to take that step. Um, so the me medical industrial complex has convinced us that we're powerless, but we're not. And that's what this is about, and that's what HPEC is about. It's about restoring our autonomy, privacy, security, and trust to the system. So this is us, doctors and patients. And, you know, hospitals, insurance companies, they're sucking us dry. They're siphoning money off of the sacred doctor-patient relationship. They're making money off of our sick and dying patients. Uh, these third parties... Most of them provide a sliver of the value that they take, uh, and they're all middlemen. And they're denying services to the patients, they're sending them surprise bills, and then they're denying payment to us when we actually do serve them. And then they're taking big fat chunks for themselves, and they're creating extreme malaligned incentives. And this is the problem that we need to fix. This is why we need that secure, direct, and private communication between doctors and patients. And so this is what, you know, it is. Thank you for that reminding, <laughs> reminder. Um, anyway, we didn't go that far, but um, so we have, you know, these third parties siphoning, uh, you know, money out of the pain and suffering of patients. You know, they're denying payment to doctors for their services and they're denying, um, you know, services to patients, uh, creating, you know, prior authorizations and putting them between us. And so, you know, this is how we feel. You know, this picture shows the very problem that we're solving with, with this company, uh, with this organization, with this DAO. You know, physicians and patients are now trapped in narrow insurance networks and large vertically integrated health systems. We're being watched, we're being surveilled. Uh, you know, and so the doctors here with the patient, and I love this picture because there's all these other people in the room, they don't even know it. You know, they're just kind of going about their business, not even realizing that they're being watched because that's what's actually happening. And so if you notice, there's an old looking, you know, computer that probably has Windows 98 on it uh, and she's not using it. She's sifting through paperwork instead. Now, why is that? You know, you and I know why as physicians, 
is because that EHR is basically worthless. There's mostly junk, dirty, nonsensical data um, that we don't use or need. And so, um, you know, this is the problem that we're solving. Um, we need to get these people out of our exam room. We need to get the third parties out of our exam room. Um, you know, we, we no longer want um, our relationship infringed upon. And, um, you know, we want our patient's information to be private. You know, we don't want a disruption in how we're practicing medicine. And so we as an organization, as a physician community, are choosing to do something about this. And now we have access to a new technology that can help us. And so this technology allows for the secure, direct communication with doctors and patients. You know, initially this app is going to be for physicians only, where we can communicate and collaborate with each other. But eventually we hope to interface with health records that are also decentralized and give patients direct access to their information and their data as well. That's one of our long-term goals. And so when I say direct, many people don't really understand, um, but it's free from third parties. Uh, and we use decentralized identity, which is a new technology to do that. And so this is the future that we're looking at. You know, the future looks bright for physicians who choose to pick up this technology and use it because it's going to restore that privacy that we once had. It's going to get those third parties out of the exam room. And, you know, people who have chosen to be some of the earliest members of this organization, some of the earliest investors and some of the earliest users are really, uh, you know, laying the foundation for a future decentralized healthcare ecosystem where doctors and patients are interacting securely, directly, and privately. And so, you know, we are adopting and building the privacy preserving tools that will allow for this exact picture to be our future. Um, you know, the question I always get at this point is, well, that sounds great, but how are we going to get them to let us use it? And this is a, a question that really demonstrate the disempowerment and the, and the Stockholm syndrome that many of us as physicians have succumbed to. You know, we have this weird, we've been kind of convinced that, you know, we have to be allowed to do things and they have to let us do things and we're not allowed to unless they say it's okay. But we are the value creators in this system. We're the ones that prevent death and permanent disability. We are the ones providing the services that the patients need. And we've allowed ourselves to believe that we need to be allowed to take care of our patients. And that's just simply not true. We have a lot more power than we realize. We just need to you know, pick up the tools that allow us to be empowered and that make it easier for us. And so that's what this is about. Um, you know, uh, decentralized identity has open protocols, open standards available to anyone. And they're actually being adopted uh, across public and private systems already. Um, so HPEC as a, as a wallet is building these new technologies for us to use so that they can interface with all of the future decentralized systems as well. And so what is decentralized identity? This is um, the tool and the protocol that's going to allow for this secure direct communication. Uh, it's a very new protocol and it's being developed by the same people that develop the protocols on the internet that allow for identity to be authenticated already. So when you log into any system, um, especially in an advanced system, you know, you log in with a username and a password. Sometimes there's passwordless login. Um, and then there's also single sign-ons. And all of these protocols are essentially authenticating that you are who you say you are. And they're, they're doing it with third parties. With decentralized identity, you own your authentication information. You own your identity. You own your right to transact and interact in the world. Um, so um, this technology is basically the secret sauce that's going to allow us to interact and communicate directly and privately. And I see somebody who is mentioning HIPAA. So decentralized identity communication protocol is more robust than HIPAA. Um, HIPAA also um, only applies when you are entering information onto a third party system. HIPAA doesn't apply between a doctor and a patient. Um, it only applies when we put this information onto electronic systems. So if I write down on a piece of paper what your lab results are and I hand it to you, I'm allowed to do that as a doctor. If I keep paper records in my office, I'm allowed to do that as a doctor. 
If I'm storing your information on my central server in my office that doesn't go anywhere else and it's not on some, some centralized server, that's not, HIPAA does not apply there. It only applies with the electronic sharing of patient information. Um, and so that I think that we need to be um, aware of. Okay. So um, this is um, the system that we are going to use in order to fix this problem. So we have our credential wallet and our identity wallet from HPEC, but we also have the Evercred credential issuing system. And so people keep asking, how are you going to pay for this? Are you going to charge doctors for this? And the answer is no, I'm not charging doctors anything. This is a free service that we as you know, physician investors, we are bringing this to you. Um, and we're bringing this as a tool that you can use for credentialing as well. Most people don't realize that credentialing is a $5 billion industry and that it costs doctors $1,600 on average per year to be credentialed and to re-credential. And so for those of you in, in, the, in the audience, most of you have been credentialed. Um, you, know, you know it's a manual, friction-filled, paperwork, faxing, notarizing nightmare. And there is a way for this to be uh, digitized and made electronic with this new technology. Uh, that's a more user-centric uh, and secure way. And so we have a way to solve this very friction-filled, expensive problem. We have a way to generate revenue on the platform because you can sell your credential and identity uh, data rather than some of the third parties that are currently um, actually selling your data without your knowledge or consent. You now can own it, you now can sell it, and that's the service that we're gonna provide. So um, just to kind of give people an understanding, you know, people are like, I still don't get it. Let's just go through the whole process of credentialing. So you have an issuing institution like a medical school, a state licensing board or a residency program. They issue you a certificate in paper form. You say, awesome, thank you. You get a job, you present that uh, certificate to that employer. That employer then says, thanks a lot, but we need to check and make sure that that's real. And so they show that credential to your uh, medical school or credential issuing body. And they say, hey, is this thing real? And they say, yep, that's real. And this process, what people don't realize, it takes four to six months and it costs $5 billion a year. And doctors lose money that they could be making during that time sometimes. They're sitting at home, twiddling their thumbs, unable to work. And hospitals can lose up to a million dollars on average for every credential event. So the way that we are changing this is we are still not going to change the workflow at all. We're still issuing the paper credential, but at the same time, we're issuing digital, uh, a digital credential into your wallet. And then we're hashing or documenting proof that that credential was actually issued by your issuing body. And so when you present the digital credential, it's instantaneously verified because they can immediately read that that registry um, you know, demonstrated that it was actually your issuing body. So you become the primary source of your credentials with this technology. That is how it's so powerful. And that's how we are going to have a, a first use case. And so with that being said, um, I just want to remind everyone who does have a wallet that uh, we need to all go through account recovery. Now, I want to apologize because we were supposed to have a push notification that nudged you to do account recovery, but that actually failed with some of our earliest users. So um, if you can, when you can, go into the app and, and go through the recovery process uh, so that you can hold and store your private keys. And so I just wanna give you an understanding, you know, HPEC is a decentralized application. It's called a DAP or a DAP. Um, and so uh, because of that, it means that you are in charge. And so uh, with, you know, great responsibility um, also comes great risk. You know, if you're in charge and you own your information, you can also lose your information. So when you hold your private key in the form of a QR code, it's essentially your seed phrase that will allow us to recover your account. Um, and we, we, are, we become the custodians of your account so that that can happen. Now, right now, we are the full custodians of your identity but we aim to move fully to a decentralized system so it's really important that this gets done and so with that being said i want to just quickly show you this video um, that will show you how to do that 
So I'm going to show you how to set up account recovery uh, for your HPEC account. Now, this is a little different than the way that we are used to setting up account recovery. So let me walk you through it. So first you open the app and you go to your profile. So this is a fake account, fake profile picture I found randomly on the internet. This is not a real person. Uh, this is just to demonstrate how account recovery works. So you go to your profile in the app and you click the gear icon on the right side and um, you scroll down until it says account recovery. So you click that. And now right now, the only option is to save a QR code. There might be other options in the future, but this is our first earliest beta, beta version. And so uh, you save a QR code. It's going to ask you to choose a pin. We'll just randomly pick the year because this is again, a dummy account. So we choose the pin, we verify our pin and it's going to ask for um, a passcode a pin code thumbprint or face id so we'll give them the face uh, the uh, thumbprint recognition there and now we have the qr code so what do we want to do here we want to take a screenshot with our phone and then save that in a secure place um, we can also send it to your email and when that happens you should receive an email that you can open and um, you know, if you uh, take a look, you should have that QR code. So now what you want to do is you want to save this, you want to print it, and then you want to delete the email and delete the screenshot. Um, and so now you should be able to get into your account in the future. Um, if you accidentally delete your account or lose your phone, you should be able to scan that QR code and get back in. And that is how you set up account recovery. So I, you know, I guess I'm, I'm hoping that everybody understands the importance of this and we're going to be sending more reminders, uh, but if you ever need help, you can also email us help at hpec.io and we have tech support there too. And so now I'm going to put a poll in the chat um, that is going to ask us to uh, give our opinion about what are the most important and pressing issues that um, we need to pay attention to moving forward. So if you open up this poll, um, awesome. I'm glad it was easy, perfect. Um, so yes, exactly. So you wanna save your QR code in a place where uh, nobody can really get it. Uh, yes, you need your pin also with it, um, but this is how, you know, if you lose your phone, this is how you'll get back in. And as I mentioned, you know, we can recover it, but you know, it's, it's a cumbersome process. So um, let's try to get everybody uh, to get on board with that. So I'd love to have everybody take a few minutes to kind of look through these issues and choose the ones that concern you. You know, many of you might choose all of them, that's fine. Um, but I really, you know, I want an understanding of what's the most important thing. You know, we did this survey back in 2020. I want to see how um, things changed. So the poll questions are in the chat. So I'll, I'll post it there again. So just click, click uh, the link in the chat. Um, I just I just shared it one more time. So uh, let's see here. If you don't see these, uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh oh, this is why I wasn't sending it to everyone. I apologize. Okay, there we go. Does everybody see it now? <laughs> Yay! Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was accidentally sending it basically to myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, so this um, poll was taken and created by the physician community already. And there's a lot of really important things on here, um, but I'd love to hear from you, you know, and, and later we're gonna choose the things that are most important, but I just wanna hear what is important. Some people don't care about some of the things on this list. If you don't care about it, don't click it. If you wanna add another option, you can click the other button, um, please do that. And so um, I'm gonna give everybody a minute to do that. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how the opinions have changed in the two years since uh, the coronavirus pandemic. So, um, okay, so I'm going to continue on. Um, uh oh, so there's some, somebody's raising their hand. Um, let's see. This is the first time I'm doing a webinar completely by myself, so I apologize if I don't see you guys quite yet. Um, 
Are you able to put your questions in the chat? You can write them to me directly um, if you'd like, because I don't, I'm not seeing the hands that are raised. So pop them in there and I'll take a look. And I'm also going to save time after for questions, uh, you know, with the recording off as well. Okay, so a DAO. What is a DAO? Uh, it's a really kind of abstract concept for many, um, but uh, a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. And so I want people to realize that the word autonomy is in there. Uh, and I believe, you know, that problem that we, you know, all these problems that we have, um, I believe a lot of them have to do with an autonomy problem. I believe the center of that is autonomy. We've lost our freedom. We've lost the rights to, to move. Uh, yes, those answers only go to me. Um, they're not going to be shared with anyone. Uh, so, um, you know, a lot of people talk about a physician union. Uh, it's a great idea conceptually. However, there's three things about a union that make it very, very hard uh, for doctors to do. You know, they say that physicians can't unionize, but that's actually not true. We can. There's actually the Committee of Interns and Residents. There's the Union of American Physicians and Dentists. There's other smaller unions that doctors are a part of. So it's not that it's illegal, uh, but it is illegal for us to do a lot of the things that unions do. Uh, we're not allowed to collude to price fix, and that's not going to change. Um, we're also not meaning like decide that we're going to raise the prices equally and, and all that stuff. And then um, we're also not allowed to strike. Um, we're allowed to strike for a very brief period, only if it's uh, planned in advance and only if there's coverage for our, our, you know, us leaving. So it's really not creating any any stress on the system when that happens, aside from some bad press. So yes, it's legal. Um, there's two things that we aren't allowed to, you know, that aren't really uh, allowed to do when we unionize. But when a union, with a union, physicians, number one, have to be employed. So you're not allowed to join a union if you're independent. And so that's a problem. Um, so let's see here. So um, you have to be employed. So independent doctors aren't allowed uh, to join unions. And then 51% of the people have to join the union and they have to agree to or else it can't happen and then you also have to agree to have three to five percent of your um income taken to pay for the union so this is all very hard imagine trying to get 51 percent of the doctors in your hospital to agree to this and then have five you know five percent of their salary taken um you know so what it, all the things that a union can do for us a dao can do better in my opinion a dao is essentially a, a digital physician's guild um, and it's open participation, meaning 1% of people can join or 89% can join, and it still has the same mechanism. Um, and so uh, let me, oops. So let me just go through what an organization is. So the traditional organizations are top down, owned and controlled by the shareholders. Um, so Every single company we know of is is this way. Even B Corps have shareholders. So in a DAO, it's decentralized, autonomous, and owned and controlled by the participants. So it's more of an egalitarian uh, organization. And so this is why I believe that we as a physician community need this. And so with that, I'm going to share our explainer video. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may have not, but it really does kind of explain this a little bit. So, oops. The United States healthcare system is broken. Physicians have been disempowered by managed care and have lost control over the practice of medicine. But a new secure technology has the ability to change that. This technology can distribute power away from minority stakeholders in our healthcare system in a process called decentralization. Decentralization is a community driven process where individuals on a network each have an equal stake and can collaborate towards common interests. HPEC is from the physician community for the physician community. Physicians share the common interest of liberating the doctor-patient relationship from the grips of managed care, decentralizing power away from third parties who do not provide value. The problem is huge, and there hasn't been a consensus on how to address it within the community. 
That's partially because physicians are experts focused on their particular field, which makes it difficult for them to agree on potential solutions. HPEC solves this problem by digitally organizing the physician community around shared interests and common goals, while simultaneously allowing them to protect their own individual needs, so they can continue to protect the individual needs of their patients. The HPEC platform is designed to protect the sovereign rights of those who choose to participate in the network because the governance protocol will be self-directed. Blockchain technology will ensure the data is secure, and the individual physicians on the network will ensure the network can be trusted. We can build trust without the need for hierarchy or centralized control when decisions are powered by the collective efforts of practicing physicians on the network. HPEC, unlock the future of healthcare. Sign up for our newsletter to learn more. So I hope that um, that clarified some things for some people. Uh, so, you know, essentially we're just doing things differently. You know, not only are we uh, creating a credentialing solution, but we're also creating community. We're creating a decentralized referral network where doctors can collaborate and convene towards common goals that might make life easier for them so that they can take care of their patients better. And also, once patients have a tool, once patients have decentralized health records that enable these protocols, we can then transfer their data directly to them. Uh, and so we can eliminate the surveillance that's going on. And, you know, there's people that are asking, well, how are we going to get people to accept this? Um, you know, there's regulatory signals uh, that this is something that needs to be accepted. So, for example, uh, the 21st Century Cures Act has basically said that patients need to have direct and immediate access to their records. In my opinion, this is the only technology that truly allows that to happen in a privacy preserving user centric way. And so that's why I've latched on to it so much. So um, let's do another poll. This time I'm gonna make sure I'm sending it to you guys instead of just to myself. Um, so uh, this is basically the same poll, but I'm asking you to choose uh, the top three uh, things that you think are important for us to work on, because as a DAO, we need to decide what are we going to you know, organize around. Uh, and so uh, I'd love to hear people's opinions on the most pressing, most important issues of today. And so if you could take a few moments to do that. Um, and um, I'm going to share, well, maybe I'll wait. I'll wait and let you guys finish until, uh, you know, we did this poll uh two years ago and so the, you know the results were very interesting um so let's see here give me some thumbs up in the chat when you guys are all done perfect there's a lot of things on that list a lot of things that need to be fixed hard to pick three, but it seems like people are, it is the same poll, but this one, you're only allowed to pick three answers before you could pick as many as you wanted uh, so that we can get an understanding of what's the most important thing, you know? Uh, perfect. Okay. So we're going to continue on. And so this is the results from 2020. We had 63 responses at that time. And so, you know, people really are like generally physician advocacy, physician advocacy is really it. And that's, you know, that's what this is about. This is a platform where we can advocate for ourselves and our, our colleagues, and then later our patients. Um, the other one cared a lot about also board certification and maintenance of certification. This is a big pain point for us. You know, some of you have seen my videos regarding mock. You know, I don't have any problem with initial board certification, but I do have a problem with being forced to purchase a product in order to have a job. You know, so Dr. Wes Fisher is a champion of this issue. You might know him. Um, so follow him on, on social media. Uh, you know, this is something that we could potentially to work on. And then physician suicide and PTSD. You know, we have, you know, the physicians have the highest suicide rate of any profession. You know, we have some of our physician members who volunteer their time on the physician helpline that was um, uh, created by Dr. Mona Sood. So, you know, this is a big problem. And so they're all kind of interrelated. All of these are interrelated. Um, so let's let's fix them all, but let's see what the results are. And I'm going to share them with people who are members of the DAO shortly. So um, the only um, other things that I want you to consider is inviting your colleagues. You know, because this is a 
decentralized application, because this is a community driven effort, this will only be possible if we all adopt it, we all share it with our colleagues, and we all work together to build this future that we're trying to build. Uh, and just to let you know, you get rewarded when you invite people and they onboard. Um, and if they're physicians, uh, you get points. And so the earliest members have the ability to accumulate the most points. Uh, and those points will later be used for all kinds of things. You know, not only are we going to be doing another crowdfund, um, we might do a token launch. Uh, and we also are talking to vendors already so that we can get, you know, uh, discounts on certain things, products, services, subscriptions, things that doctors want. And there's other things that we can use these points for as well. So, um, I, you know, please use your invites. If you are one of the, our earliest adopters, you should have three invites in the app and everybody here is going to be given invites sometime in the next week or so as well. Uh, so that being said, I just want to remind everyone that, you know, this is our chance, you know, this is about you. This is about our patients. This is about owning our future. This is about, you know, being the people that we were meant to be when we entered medical school and getting rid of all the friction and making it easier, you know, and so with that, I want to say thank you. Thank you again for sharing your evening with me, uh, for being a part of this, uh, for fixing our broken healthcare system with us. I appreciate you more than you know, especially our earliest users, our earliest investors. And uh, I'm going to turn off the recording and stick around for any questions uh, that people want to ask off this. And um, yeah, thank you again.